Are you wondering what to say to a commercial real estate seller in order to generate more leads right now? Well, in today's video, I'm going to explain exactly the A to Z when it comes to scripting so that you can take all this information, go out and make some calls today and go get some leads. The first thing I want to break down for you is that there's a multifaceted piece of the script. Okay. There's the opening line, the rapport building, then you're going to go into qualifying questions and then you got the close all very, very, very important. I'm going to walk you through each and every single step. And by the way, if you're wondering exactly what to say on these scripts, you can go in the description down below. There's actually a free script book where I'm basically reciting just about every single one of these lines. I've compacted, made a perfect script for you where all you have to do is read it follow it, you're going to get some leads. So I'm just going to explain that right here in this video. Let's start with the opening line. I think this is probably one of the most important things to talk about. Hey, John, this is Henry. How are you doing today? He's going to say, good. How are you? I'm going to say, great. Again, my name is Henry with XYZ company. I can use my investment company. You can say XYZ real estate company, whatever you want. And then say the reason for the phone call is the reason for my phone call is, is going to be incredibly important to share. That entire line can be broken down in several different aspects. Well, if you've been following my channel, Channel, I call as an investor quite often, which means as a principal, which means I'm calling it as an investor. So that simple script is going to go like, Hey John, this is Henry. How are you today? He's going to go good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Again, my name is Henry. I'm a local real estate investor here in town. And I was calling you because I'm going through a 1031 exchange. And I was just curious if you'd be totally against selling your property at 123 Main Street. That's the opening line as a principal. Now you can say the same thing as saying like, uh, my name is Henry with Ironstone Capital. The reason for the phone call is my investment company, my partners, and I are going through a 1031 exchange and we're just giving you a call to see if you'd be at all open to selling your property or if you'd be totally against selling your property at 123 Main Street. So you can kind of fill in the blanks, kind of you know plug thing, certain things in. So if you don't want to say the 1031 exchange, you can simply just say, hey, John, my name is Henry. I'm a local investor here in town and I'm looking to buy another couple properties before the end of the year. And I'm just curious if you'd be totally against selling your property at 123 Main Street. That's simple. You don't have to say the 1031 exchange if you don't want to. It's what's worked for me. I've tested and trialed several opening lines, you know, hundreds of opening lines over my career. And I'm telling you, this is what has worked. That's the principal script. If you'd like to go as a commercial real estate agent, then you can use the following, which is, uh, Hey John, my name is Henry. I was calling you about one, two, three main street. How you doing today? And they're going to say, good. How are you? I'm going to say, John, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you again. My name is Henry with XYZ real estate company with EXP commercial. The reason for the phone call today is I'm representing a client who's going through a 1031 exchange and is looking to move some money for tax purposes. And I was just curious, John, if you consider at all selling the property at one, two, three main street or if you'd be totally against selling the property at 123 Main Street. Again, it's all about silence at the end of that. So you say a statement and then you go silent. The purpose of that is it's essentially the same sales script if you do not want to be the investor or the principal buyer. You can say that if you don't want to you know, say the 1031 exchange thing, you can again just go right into the script and say it just like before, which is, and again, John, my name is Henry with eXp Commercial. And the reason for the phone call today is that I represent a client who's looking to buy another property in the area. And I was just curious if you'd be totally against selling the property you have at 123 Main Street. That's the simplicity of it. And I want to be clear, you don't have to say your last name. You know, it's just like, hi, my name is Henry with completely irrelevant to say certain things like that. So it's just your first name, XYZ company, reason for the phone call is, or I'm calling you because. Very simple. And I still follow this philosophy from decades later. And I know a bunch of the sales people are just like, or the sales trainers out there, you know, they have this weird thing, which is like, you know, pretend to stutter on the phone where it's like, uh, uh, hey, John, uh, my name is, my name is Henry. And I was calling you about a property, uh, at 123 Main Street. How you doing today? Get to the point. Like, sound confident. Sound like you know what you're talking about. I mean, like, you don't have to stutter and pretend like you're having some problem going on. <laughs> There's no reason here. The purpose is just make the phone calls just as it's stated in the script and it works. Okay. I'm proven, proven results. My team makes hundreds of thousands of phone calls every year. We use a lot of these sales scripts. We test and trial a bunch of stuff every single year. We see it gets results. Therefore, we use it. That's the opening line. And again, at the very end, you're going to just be silent. So you're going to say, Would you be totally against selling your property? One, two, three, Main Street. Silence. That's it. And then you wait for their response. This is one thing I want to be very clear with you, which is what I talk about a lot in the coaching program, which is pivoting, being agile and adjusting accordingly based on their response. Because now we understand the opening line. Okay. You're going to basically use one of two different scripts, which is I'm the principal buyer or I'm the realtor calling on behalf of. Now, if you, I'm going to throw this one in real quick and then we'll talk about adjusting, which is the buyer script and just say, or Hey John, my name is Henry. I was calling you about your property. One, two, three main street. How you doing today? They're going to say, great. Thank you. The reason for the phone call today is that I actually have a client who's looking to sell a building at one, two, three main street. I know you own one, two, seven main street or, you know, at one, two, seven main street. I know you own one, two, three main street. And I was just reaching out to you because I see you own a couple properties locally. And I was just curious if you'd be at all open to buying another property in town. That's it. 
and then you stop talking at the end, right? So it's the rule of thumb where you say the script and then shut up. And you're just waiting for a response. And it could be dead silent for a little bit. And the point is get used to the silence. So you got the principal buyer script. You have the calling on behalf of a buyer script. And then you have the calling on behalf of a seller script. So it's just about everything you need to have that opening line go super smooth. Okay, and all again, all you have to do is just say it. And I promise you, it works. A pivoting and adjusting. I want to walk you through this piece of it because this is part of the rapport building. What happens commonly is that if someone says, no, I'm not interested in selling, thanks. Most individuals, most real estate agents, okay? Most people on the phone will just go, okay, thanks, goodbye. What I like to do is I like to push until being hung up on, which I, a lot of people are just like, this is kind of weird or this, I don't want to sound pressury or salesy. I don't want to sound pressury or salesy either. That's not the purpose of what I'm mentioning. What I'm mentioning to you is saying, I want to continue asking more questions until I can get a possible different response or maybe they hang up on me. And let me give you an example. First, let's talk as a principal. I'm calling as a principal and they say, they have no interest in selling. But John, totally get it. I mean, look, I'm calling you out of the blue. I'm just kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place here. My partners and I are going through this 1031. We need to buy something. So do you happen to have anything else besides this property, 123 Main Street, that you might consider selling? And the reason why I'm asking this is because this then gives me an idea if they're a mom and pop owner, they only own one or maybe two properties, or maybe they own several. So they go, actually, I own a few properties. Maybe maybe one of those I consider selling. Or they're going to be like, no, I have no interest in selling any of my properties. Or they're going to say, I don't own any other properties and I'm not interested. Thanks. Just curious though, is it that you occupy this property? property and, and the reason why you don't want to sell is because you don't want to move your business. And they're like, yeah, well, we do occupy the building and I have no interest in it in moving my business. Okay. Well, if we got you a fantastic number and we gave you the option to lease the property back or we can give you a big cash injection into your business, would you be totally against selling the property then if we could structure a lease back? And they're, they're sometimes really going to say yes. And there's sometimes they're going to say no, it's totally okay. Yeah. And no, look at that. I have no interest in selling. Thanks, John, hear you loud and clear. No problem at all. Have a great day. And I'll move on. But let's just say they say they have other properties. Look, I have a bunch of other properties. I'm not looking to sell anything. I'm a buyer. Speaking of being a buyer, look, I'm a local broker as well. I hold a license, but I'm calling you as a principal looking to buy a property because I am going through a 1031. But I am curious though, we do come across a lot of good product, which probably, you know, just may or may not fit my personal buy box, or I maybe just don't have a, I'm not in a cash position to buy something. What kind of properties do you buy? And then I'll flip it into a buyer script. Be ready to pivot, be ready to adjust immediately. And just, it's a casual flowy conversation. And then if they say something again, where it's like, let's just say you go back to the, if you got overpaid on the property, or if you said like, Hey John, just curious though, if I got you like a crazy price for your property, would you be totally against selling it? They're gonna be like, okay, what's the crazy price? But like, listen, I know I'm calling out of the blue. I don't have a number off the top of my head. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about the property to try to get you the best price possible? And it goes, yeah, sure. And, and John, do you happen to have a number in mind where if you got it, you might consider it? And then they might tell you. And if not, you can be like, okay, and they're like, look, you called me, give me an offer. John, I can absolutely get you an offer. I do have to ask you a few questions though, in order to get you the best number, or I'm just going to be making something up off the top of my head. And then you're not going to like the offer I make because it's probably not anywhere near accurate because I don't know enough information to make that decision. So do you have two minutes for me? Yeah, I got two minutes. Okay, cool. And then I'll go into the qualifying questions part. Okay. But this is still part of the adjustments, part of the pivoting. You need to be fast on your feet because just because they say no, it's like a knee jerk reaction. It's an absolute knee jerk reaction. It's not something that you need to take super seriously. If that is the case and they say no, just continue with the script. I hear you. Loud and clear, you don't want to sell a property. I am curious though, if you did get some fantastic number, possibly even over market value, because we do have to go through a 1031, we do have to buy something. I am curious if you'd still be at all open to selling the property. And then sometimes they change their minds or sometimes they're just like, you know, they realize that you're actually a real person and they're you're not just messing with them. That's the principal buyer piece of this. Let's flip this. Now we are at a broker calling on behalf of a buyer and they say, I'm not interested in selling. John, I hear you loud and clear. I'm cold calling you out of the blue. I do want to be very clear. My client is at a point where they have to buy something you know, at market, above market, as long as the numbers make sense, or we need to buy something. So I am curious, maybe it's not this property, one, two, three main street, but I am curious. Do you happen to have any other properties you'd be totally against selling? Because I have to find my, my buyer something by, you know, by the end of next month, by the end of this year, whatever you want to say. And then John's like, I do have another property at whatever street, at banana street in some other city. Like, okay, yeah, well, I don't know if that'll work, but do you mind sharing the address with me? I can put it in front of my buyer and see what they say. Like, yeah, sure. And then they give you the other address. Or sometimes they're like, oh, well, I don't really know who you are. Well, Listen, again, my name is Henry with eXp Commercial. I'm calling on behalf of a client who has a small investment company, but they just sold the property for about 10 million bucks. You know, it's only a few partners. It's not some big conglomerate business like Blackstone. So him and a few partners, they just sold the property for about 10 million bucks. They got to move 10 million bucks minimum. So I am just curious if maybe you can consider selling one of your properties 
exchange for a great price. That's the only reason why I called you. It's all flowy and conversational and fun and lighthearted. It's not super strict and anything like that, right? It's not, you know, not super controlling energy. So it's just having fun and continue to ask questions and smile the whole time because people can feel that on the other side of the phone. Now let's flip it to the buyer side. You're calling on behalf of someone who wants to sell a property down the street and you're calling to see if they might buy it. When you do that opening line, it's like, well, I'm not really open to buying anything. Thank you. John, I hear you loud and clear. I know this is a cold call kind of out of the blue. I am curious though. I know I'm kind of calling you to see if you might consider buying something, but do you have something in your portfolio you might consider selling? I actually have a client who said no to this property, but needs to buy another property locally. And I'm just curious, John, would you consider selling your property at 123 Main Street? So you flip it right back into the seller script. A similar concept, just backwards flipping. You can adjust and pivot in any which way that you need. It's just being casual about it, like we had mentioned, and lighthearted about it. And then you can say yes or no if he's open to sell, and then you go back right in, into the pivoting piece that we just mentioned, where it's maybe not, you know, maybe not selling that property. Well, do you happen to have any other properties locally? He may be open to going to other cities locally, but he needs to buy something because I have a client who's going through a 1031 and obviously needs to spend some money. So I'm curious, you know, do you happen to have any other properties besides 123 Main Street you might consider selling? I'm also gonna mention real quick the listing script, which is when you're speaking to somebody, you can add this in in just about any facet, which is someone who might be open to selling. And during that part of it, if they say some kind of crazy high number, be like, listen, John, I'm going to do my absolute best to try to get you the $10 million number you mentioned. I am just curious though, would you be totally against having me market the property for sale where I might be able to get you possibly more than the $10 million number you requested? You'd be quiet. Perfect you know, transition right into possibly listing the property for sale. But this is obviously only for the people who are open to selling and the people who, you know, possibly tell you too high of a price to consider selling it right away. Cause you might have some buyers that you're actually calling on the behalf of, like I do. I call on behalf of buyers all the time. And I'm also a buyer myself looking to buy some property. This is just a blended way for you to kind of pivot and make adjustments over and over and over again, where in just about any scenario, you should be able to lock down a deal in some fashion. Okay, let's talk about some qualifying questions. So when it comes to qualifying questions, this is all about getting an understanding of what the situation is. This means you are speaking to the individual who's open to selling the property. And now you want to ask questions about their situation and the property so that you can then underwrite the property. See what the value actually is. Try to get a price out of them, right? Possibly make an offer on the property as an investor, like we know, like, like I talk about all the time. And then if it maybe doesn't work for you, you can put it in front of a bunch of your buyer clients and see if it works for them. Let's break down what some qualifying questions are, which again are in the description down below. You can download the script book for free. Literally the same questions I'm about to tell you. This way you at least have a PDF version of it and you have it in front of you forever. The questions are similar to this. John, if you don't mind, would you be able to share with me some type of financial numbers, like what it possibly grosses on a monthly or annual basis? Because I want to understand about what it brings in, right? Like, so you're, you're going to try to get some financials. So you ask them just kindly, hey, John, would you mind being able to share what the property grosses on a monthly or maybe annual basis if you have that off the top of your head? And they're like, well, I don't really know. Again, you could just give me a rough number or an estimate. It's all okay. I'm not going to hold you to it. But this is just so I can, you know, analyze it a little bit and see if it's a good fit for us or for my buyer. But yeah, it's bringing in maybe around 15000 maybe $14,000 a month or whatever they say. 15000 a month. So about 100 Eighty thousand a year, yeah, give or take or so. Okay, well, let's just say this is an industrial property. Like, and do be clear, how many tenants are there? Right? Is that one tenant that's paying you that money, or is there, you know, maybe a couple tenants there? No, there's a couple tenants. Okay, and then is everybody on triple net leases? No, actually, some, you know, most of the tenants are actually on gross leases. One tenant's on triple net. Okay, you're grossing 180, but that means you're probably netting something like maybe 120, 130 a year. Yeah, that sounds about right. Look, you can just do a quick 60% income ratio where you have 40% to expense, like a 40% expense ratio or a 35% expense ratio. That ballpark seems to be very conservatively on the money. If they're all on triple net, obviously, then you're probably, you're going to have 100% income, right? If they say 180,000 triple net, they're like, okay, great. So it's you're netting 180 grand. Yes, that's a, yes, exactly. So you just have to listen to the key terms here because if it's a gross lease, that means you're not paying all the expenses. So these are things that if you're again new to the industry, I'm not going to go into that right now. These are just qualifying questions. You're going to get a little bit of understanding about the leases, which is, and is everybody on leases? Or are they month to month? No, everyone's on leases. So they probably have anywhere between like two years, three years, left or, and if they don't sell you that you can be like okay so on average how many years do they have left like well they have probably two years one year month to month whatever you're gonna say and just to let you know you're gonna also want to ask questions like is there any increases in the leases maybe like a two percent or three percent increases or are they just on a flat rate for the entirety of their lease now everything i'm telling you to say real quick for an industrial client you can also mention some of this in for retail same thing when it comes to leases triple net gross income numbers all that kind of stuff fairly similar right you know almost identical the only thing that might be different when it comes to industrial you can ask questions like how high 
higher the ceilings, right? Are they, you know, very tall ceilings? How much office, you know, just curious if, if they say it's a 40,000 square foot warehouse. Yeah, based on the information here online, I see that it's 40,000 square feet. Is that accurate? Yes. What percentage of that is office versus warehouse space? So they'll be like, well, 4,000 square feet of it is office and the other remaining portion is all warehouse. And it's like 18 foot ceilings or it's this foot ceilings. They're going to tell you, okay, and then there's any drive-ins and loading docks or anything like that. No, or they're, they're saying yes or whatever they're going to say. The point is you're going to go through the entirety of the script. So for multifamily, an easy question you're going to ask is, John, so could you just clarify the unit count? Then they're going to tell you. And then you could say something along the lines, okay, and are they all two bedrooms? I mean, would you be able to break down the unit mix for me on a bedroom basis or bedroom bathroom basis? And then they're going to tell you, oh yeah, they're all two bedrooms or they're all one bedroom, all studios, or maybe there's a mix. And they're going to try to give you that breakdown. John, I can appreciate that. So are they month to month or are they on leases? Most tenants are on leases. Okay. And then are, are they on sec, are they section eight or are they just regular tenancies? No, they're regular tenancies. We don't do any section eight here, or we do all section eight. It's a very important to know, but okay. Awesome. And then just curious, have you done any renovations in the last maybe five or 10 years to the building? They're going to try to tell you. Okay. Awesome. And then based on that information, John, do you happen to have an idea of what kind of price range you'd be at? If, if you did get a great number, what would that be for you? Right. Or do you happen to have a number in mind, John? So, you know, based on the information uh, you gave me, I, which I appreciate very, very much, I'm going to try to get you the best number possible. Do you happen to have a number in mind that you might consider selling the property for? And they're going to give you a number. Ideally, they're going to give you a number. And then sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're like, I honestly have no idea what it's worth, which is a good thing. If they say they don't know what it's worth, I'm like, John, hear you loud and clear. I'm going to run some numbers for you. Like I mentioned, I'm a, you know, a, I'm a principal or I, like I mentioned, I'm a top broker in the area. Let me give you a quick evaluation on the property and then I can try to get you some offers. How does that sound? Sounds good. Thank you so much. Awesome. That's it. And then guess what? They're going to be like, John, other than an offer at this point in time, is there anything I can do for you? You had mentioned that your retail building, your industrial building or whatever has some vacancies. Do you need some support on leasing the building out if we don't sell the building? No, actually I have a leasing broker. Okay. It's important to ask these questions because you want to know if they have a broker or not. And then you can go into something like, okay, John, I'm going to work on trying to get you the evaluation or, and or the offer based on if you say you're a broker or if you're the investor, I'm going to work on trying to get you an offer. Just out of curiosity, what's the best email for you so I can send you an offer? And they're going to give you the email. Fantastic. And then John, is this your cell phone number? Yes, this is my cell. Now what's going to happen is it's, you're going to gather all this information and you're going to be like, John, last thing I'm going to ask you, I'm going to get you an offer for sure within the next couple days or so. Might be sooner, might, might take me a couple days. Just to clarify with you, would you be able to share with me those leases after I get you an offer at least? Just because I want to make sure that the offer reflects actually what's current. And I obviously don't want to just make up something because yeah, I know you had mentioned that it was around the 180 number or around the $15,000 a month number or whatever they say, unless they have an exact or they can share. Is there any financials you guys should share with me of last year's numbers or current numbers as of this month or last month's numbers for income? And would you be open to possibly sharing some of the leases so we could review that? Some of them are going to be open to doing it. You'd be surprised. And then some of them are going to say, absolutely not. I don't even know who you are. I don't want to share any information, whatever. Give me an offer and then we'll talk. All good. Now, the last piece of this is the close. The whole purpose of the close is to set up the next phone call or the next meeting. I don't really meet with anybody. I live in South Beach, Miami, and I do deals all over the country, primarily New Jersey and Florida. But it, you get my point here. So like, I'm not going to go meet somebody. It's not typically my next step. My next step is, John, I'm going to get you an offer. Just want to clarify your contact information. And again, did you happen to have a number in mind if they didn't tell me with one already? Do you happen to have a number in mind that I can possibly put in front of my partners and I so we can try to run some numbers with my commercial lender? Yeah, look, we're kind of looking for X price. Okay, awesome. So if I can get you X price, you'd at least consider it. Yes. John, have you gotten any offers in the past that you've declined? Or would this be the first offer you received in quite some time? You want to ask these questions because it's important because they're like, hey, I actually just declined, you know, actually I declined a $2 million offer and the building's only worth a million and a half. Or I just declined a $20 million offer and you only think the building's worth 10 or 15 million based on the quick conversation. I'm just curious, what made you decline that offer? I mean, honestly, like I'm curious why you didn't take it. Sounds like a great offer. We're actually not that motivated or I have my business here. The point is that they're going to start sharing with you more information, which is why on the close, I want to reconfirm as much information as possible so that I am as educated as possible when it comes to underwriting the property and making the offer and trying to go into the transition of now trying to get this property sold. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A lot went into this. So if you have any questions, make sure you go in the description down below. Make sure you give this a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you yet to do so already. We appreciate you so much for following everything we got going on here at the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.